I'm Brian Davis. I'll be walking you through another tutorial. In this situation, we'll be putting in a closet. Now, there are a few things that are important about putting in a closet that I will take you through and address. One of them that is particular to this closet is that for some reason they have placed a light switch exactly where I would want the rod and the shelf to be. And so we need to take that into consideration. I will still run my, my rod and my, my shelf approximately where that uh, switch is, but I'll have to place everything slightly above or slightly below, because obviously I don't want the, the shelf to be in, in direct line of that switch. In this case, it'll be slightly above, um, but the, the mounting bracket will line up with that switch. I'm not quite sure why it's there, but it is, and so we'll have to work around it. But when we put in the, the closet, one of the things that you need to be aware of is that the, the closet rod, um, the, the, the longest span you can have of unsupported rod is 48 inches or 4 feet. And in this closet, it is just under 8 feet. So I want to put a, a closet rod about in the middle to make sure that we have the span fully supported. <clears throat> now, when I hang a closet rod, I, because it's going to be taking a lot of weight, all the clothes, the, you have the shelf on top, you have everything that's on top of that shelf, I want to make sure that I'm, it's fully supported. If I don't have any wood hardware, that means I need to hit a, a stud. Now, I've already gone and, and figured out where the studs are. <clears throat> I've got one here, i got one here, that's close to the middle, I've got one here, that's not quite the middle, and then it goes on the other side. So I don't hit a stud exactly in the middle where I would want the, the support for the closet rod to be. What that means is I'm going to use wood to wrap around, and then I will attach the, the closet rod support to the wood. Now, using that approach means that I don't have to worry about where center is, because I will use the wood to, to hit every single stud along the wall. Your closet rod should be approximately 67 inches off of the ground. So if we go off of that height, we want the center of the rod to be 67 inches. That means we want the shelf to be two inches higher because the center of the rod to the top of the shelf is two inches. That means I want the one by four the top of the 1x4 to be 69 inches off the ground because when the top of the 1x4 then lines up with the shelf bracket, that means that that 1x4 will also be providing the support for the shelf that this is supporting. What I'll do then is measure off of the floor 69 inches, making marks along the wall so that I, as I place my 1x4s, I can make sure that each one lines up that each one is parallel to the ground. I'm not as interested in level, and the reason why is because I want the shelf to match the lines of the floor, the ceiling, or the, the, the uh, door frame of the, the closet, and if the house is, has shifted over time, then level may not, may not actually reflect it, and the eye will notice the difference between a level closet and a, an unlevel door frame. So therefore, in this situation, I want it to be parallel to the floor and parallel to the door frame. So I've marked along the walls 69 inches, and I've marked, marked in multiple places so that I know as I'm lining up the piece of wood that it's going to be 69 all the way across. Wood can be warped, it can be twisted, I can shift as I'm, as I'm going, so I want to make sure I make multiple marks and measure or, or mark it along as I go. Sometimes if the wood is very warped, I might need to force the wood to follow the line that I'm looking for. There's one other thing that I'm interested in, in marking along this place, and that is the, the wall studs. Because these are the things that I'm going to nail into, or to screw into in this situation. And I really want to make sure that I hit the studs so that the, the whole mechanism, the whole system is fully supported. Now, there's lots of different ways of, of finding the stud in the wall. Um, and 
jokes aside about dating, not looking for those types of studs. But I, I, my, my go-to method is the tapping on the wall. And I don't know if it'll translate into the video, but you'll hear the quality of the sound change as I go across. It gets more hollow. It loses that hollowness and then gets hollow again. So where it loses the hollowness is where the stud is. Now it can be difficult in some walls to find that spot. And there's another little trick I want to point out here. And that is that when the houses are built, the switches and the outlets are often placed against the stud. They're, they're nailed down to the stud. So what that tells me is that on either side of this switch, there is most likely going to be a stud. And so it gives me a starting point. If I'm not sure where to begin, I'll start tapping around the switch. And I hear it change there. And so I know that the stud is to the right of this wall switch. Now, the other standard, or not universal, but fairly common, is that the studs in the walls are 16 inches apart. And so once I find one stud, I can measure 16 inches and I'll hit the center of the next stud. They call it 16 on center meaning each stud is, the center of the stud is 16 inches away from the previous. The other standard in the U.S. is 24 inches, so another one you want to keep your eye on. And if you have an old house with plaster walls, no amount of tapping is going to help you to find the stud. But for most common construction, that'll help you to locate it. So now I've got marks along the horizontal where I want the everything to line up. I've got long, marks on the vertical of where the studs are so that I know where to put my screws. The last thing I'm going to do before I start mounting the wood to the wall is I'm going to check to ensure that it's going to work, that, I, that I've measured accurately. So I take this piece, line it up, tight into the corner, it comes in close to the switch as I'm hoping, and then I check my vertical line, I'm sorry, my horizontal line, that everything's going to line up. And then I also check my vertical marks where the studs are, that I can still see them, that I'm not covering up with this piece of wood. One of the things I'm not noticing is that this wood is slightly bowed, it's pulling away from the wall, so I just want to be aware of that as I'm screwing it in, that I'll want to start on one end, work my way over, and make sure that the far end where the bowing is occurring is securing tightly to the wall. We have the 1x4s in place, and we will now mount the bracket, the one bracket that we're using. Now, this, the stud is right in line with those two screws, and I centered this so that it's not centered on the screw, but I know that no one side has more than 48 inches of closet rod. So I can center this bracket here, and I'll have the support that I need. I want to make sure that the top of the bracket is flush with the top of the 1x4 so that the whole 1x4 bracket system is going to hold the shelf in place. So the first thing I do is make sure that that's flush and then I make a little mark where that first screw is going to go. and then I can screw it in place. Now I need to leave a little bit of, of space so that this bracket can slide over and hold it tight without a whole lot of wobble. There's a little bit, but not too much. This bottom screw is the one that really locks it into place. We set the bracket, put the bottom anchoring screw into it, very stable. Now we're going to place the shelf. Now when you set the shelf, it's important that the shelf be a little bit smaller 
than the space that it's going to be occupying because it, it becomes really difficult to sell, set the shelf when it's very snug. In fact, I've already tried setting the shelf once and I can tell you I wish I'd taken another eighth of an inch off of the length of the shelf. It'd be a whole lot easier to put in place. So, the distance in this situation, it was uh, 89 and 7 eighths. And I took it down, I took a quarter inch off. I wish I'd taken another third down to uh, uh, whatever that number is. As you can see, it takes a little work to set. And then I have to slide it back evenly. So now it's sitting on top of the wooden braces on both sides and at the back side. And it's over the uh, light switch over there. And then I'm going to put one screw to hold it in place. I need to make sure this screw is less than three quarters of an inch long so it doesn't pierce through the top. And I don't need a lot of screws here. It's not, all it's doing is keeping it from moving around. And that's sufficient. Now we'll use the shelf to help us to set the curtain rod. The rod will sit through this main bracket here and then we'll put the, the attaching cups on either side and the shelf will have to help us make that happen. This closet rod gets cut even shorter than the shelf. First of all, we need to be able to take off three quarters of an inch for the wooden bracing on either side. And then we also have the thickness of the cups that are going to hold the closet rod on either side. And they're an eighth of an inch thick. There's two of them. So that means a total of a quarter of an inch coming off for this. Three quarters of an inch either side. That's an inch and three quarters less than the span across the shelves. To verify, it in and it's got a little bit of play. In order to place the brackets, lifting it up, placing one bracket on either side, it should then slide into place. Now I'll show it just on this one side to help illustrate the point. And we'll use this one, the center bracket, as our starting point. So measuring down from the shelf, the bottom of the rod is three inches. So then on this side, I want to make sure that the bottom of the rod is three inches down as well. And then measuring back from the back of the shelf, it is 12 and an eighth, 12 and a quarter, give or take. So then I set the same thing on this side. Now you'll see as I'm doing this, it's moving around a little bit in my hand. And so I really want to make sure that it's, I, I can keep it stable so that I know that once I place it, it'll be set. So one more time, twelfth and a quarter, three inches down, twelve and a quarter, there it is. So now I'll put little marks around the edge of the cup so that I can find it again once I remove it from this spot. We'll now screw the cup into place in the, in the center of the marks that I've made. It comes with its own screws. I've gotten to the point now where I no longer use the screws that these devices come with because I've had too many of them fail, so I'm going to use a, a more robust construction screw. Set it between the marks, center the screw, make 
make sure we're still in a good place, and then let set it. And do the same thing on the other side. We'll set the closet rod. I have both end caps secured in place. One of them has an opening at the top. That's the last one to go into place. Set it inside the cup on the end, drop it into the center support, and then into the support on the other side. There is a hole on the back side of the bracket in the middle, so I can secure this into place. It's probably wise to do if you have children around, but once you put clothing on the rod, it's not going to go anyplace. I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to uh, like the video and subscribe to the video um, if you found it useful. Thank you for watching.